A 10 second ahead lift is one of my favorite exercises and I have it in pretty much all of my programs because I think it's so important to control our head alignment for helping with the whole rest of the body and everything that involves. So today for your form Friday, we're going to be going over sternocleidomastoids and then being those big bullies when it comes to a chin tuck and head lift. So go ahead and grab a towel roll and join me on the floor. I want you to give your neck a bit of support for this. So we're going to have something to press into to help us maintain our nice cervical lordotic curve. Now, if you have forward head posture normally, then go ahead and give me this nice little roll to help with our cervical curve, but also go ahead and place something underneath it to bring your head up a little bit higher as well. Uh, so, because we've got to meet your head where it's at. Now, if you have forward head posture uh, and you try to go back down to the ground, you're just going to end up looking like this, and that is not what we want for this. Okay, so and something behind your head to gently press into. I want you to think about your chin tuck and head lift. And what I want you to do is let's start with just a clean slate and see what we feel. So I want you to lift your head up just a little bit, really lengthening your neck. Do you feel it in the sternocleidomastoids? So if I really can try to contract mine for you, there you go. Do you feel it in these big sternocleidomastoids or do you feel it more in those deep cervical flexors down kind of in your neck? Almost feels like it kind of chokes you a little bit. Okay, so when you play around like that, sometimes too much chin tuck can cause more stonocleidomastoids than those deep cervical flexors. So play around with not contracting too much. Now, one of my favorite physical therapists, Robin Angus, she is amazing. She gave out the tip the other day to gently work on starting by pressing into the floor and seeing if you can feel those deep cervical flexors doing that gentle pressing and keeping your sternocleidomastoids soft and squishy. And I want you to do this with a little bit of support for your neck and gently press into the floor, feeling that happen. So this is a good way to start to work on getting deep cervical flexors over sternocleidomastoids. So see if you can give that trick, uh, that tip a try, and see if it doesn't help you with doing your chin tucks and head lifts and getting them in the right place so that we can really use that to work on posture uh, and alignment and uh, that deep cervical, uh, deep anterior fascial line that is so great for helping the pelvic floor.